Hello everyone, I am here to record a lecture on VLSI site of VLSI site technology and the course code is KEC053. Previously in my lecture, we have studied the concept of Kruzalski's crystal growth. In that lecture, we have studied that how from a raw silicon, we are able to prepare a wafer and from this wafer only, we are producing and we are able to produce the transistors. So, in my today's lecture, we will be studying molecular beam epitaxy. So, what is the role of molecular beam epitaxy when we talk about manufacturing of a transistor? So, let us talk about some basic points and then we will proceed on molecular beam epitaxy. Let us call this as a transistor where we are having three terminals and those three terminals are source, drain and gate. So, let this be source, let this be drain and let this one be the gate terminal. So, if I talk about uh, the body, body will be here, body or substrate, let us say I am putting it to ground. So, when we are talking about the manufacturing of a transistor and this transistor will have sometimes two terminal and uh, that is nothing but BJT and sometimes it will have four ter uh, three terminals BJT and then sometimes we will have four terminals which is nothing but uh, um, MOSFET. So, here the MOSFET will be having source drain, gate and the body terminal. So, when we talk about having a wafer and then going up to transistor, we have to follow n number of steps where we sometimes remove the unwanted uh, ma material and we add the desired material. So, epitaxy is a process when we are adding, adding the desired. material. So, when we talk about adding, we, we should also know some processes which will remove the unwanted ones. So, for removal, we can use etching. Etching will help us to clean, selectively removing uh, some silicon dioxide from a specific place and then uh, having it on some other place like selective removal means from some places we will remove silicon dioxide and at the other hand uh, on the other hand from another some certain site we will have the silicon dioxide. So, that process of selective removal is lithography. So, we have to study a mix actually sometimes we are adding sometimes we are removing. So, if we have made, if I have made this point clear that when are we going to add, when we are going to subtract and remove materials. So, molecular beam epitaxy is a step where I want to add the desired, add the desired chemicals, materials, layer, whatever we can call it. So, what is molecular beam epitaxy? Uh, this epitaxial growth. Now, let us start with the word epitaxy. This epitaxy can be studied in two parts, epi and taxis. Okay. So, when we are studying uh, molecular beam epitaxy, we will study it two differently. And then what is molecular beam. Molecular beam as we can understand, let us say we have a source and from the source we have a nozzle here. From this nozzle there is a beam coming out straight. So, that beam coming out straight is nothing but molecular beam. When the beam consists of molecules, we call it molecular beam epitaxy. So, I think by this we are, uh, we have the knowledge enough to start the concept of epitaxy. Molecular beam epitaxy or MBE is a physical evaporation process where no chemical reactions are taking place 
and there is a basic difference between molecular beam this is the basic difference between molecular beam epitaxy and other epitaxial systems so particularly this process is a physical process where we are adding the desired material using the process of evaporation so from this what do we understand we will be having a source and on that source we will be having uh, some raw material which has to be which we need to add on the surface we need to add on the surface some raw material so this raw materials need to be uh, heated or uh, they can be uh, they have to you know uh, come out of the uh, nozzle so we can use anything we can use uh, temperature we can use uh, speed we can use pressure so with any of the influence this evaporations uh, this evaporation process should initiate and then the chemical will settle up it is a low temperature process that leads to minimization of auto doping process which is where intermixing of dopants will be minimized here there will be a precise control of doping because there is no chemical reactions involved in this process now uh, we have to see the growth rate here what is the growth rate growth is growth rate can be achieved as small as close to 0.1 micrometer per minute to 0.3 micrometer per minute we can see 0.1 to 0.3 means the growth rate is like very precise and we can have a precision from 0.1 micrometer to 0.3 micrometer per minute so it means 0.1 and 0.01 and 0.3 are already very close so we can have precision up to this level so when we are talking about the growth rate i mean to say how fast i am able to settle up the pattern on the top so i have we we didn't discuss what is epitaxy so here we can see means we have to realize a pattern on epi means on the top so we have to realize a pattern on the top of the uh, substrate or the wafer so we can move ahead on this this is a um, raw setup where uh, we can see the concept can be realized and here is a setup where the nozzles or effusion cells are kept at the bottom sometimes this setup can be you know it can be rotated like this and we can have the effusion cells here and of course the nozzle will be here and the substrate which needs to be layered and the substrate which needs to uh, have the desired layering will be right in the front so from here these nozzles will hit and here also these nozzles will hit and then we will have a layer of desired material which is filled here and it will get deposited here so depending upon the apparatus this is a process where we are keeping the nozzles at the bottom and we can rotate it and have the nozzles in the uh, left and right hand side of the plane so we can see here we have a titanium sublimation pump and here we have a turbo pump also so we can see that he, uh, uh, this is the effusion cells and effusion cells will have the de uh, desired uh, chemical which we need to settle so here it is the uh, either let's say we are uh, settling uh, antimony or bismuth we will be filling up the effusion cells with this so here this is the required material which is filled up now this is a ionization gauge which is nothing but to call calib uh, uh, what what we what we call uh, calibrate or uh, tune up the process and here is the mass spectrometer 
heat shield heat shield is the isolation process and here we have the thermocouple at the top we can see it is the hot plate it is the substrate and holder and uh, this is the mechanical shutter shutter when the shutter is open this will go and settle on the wafer here it is the wafer and on this wafer we will have the accumulation and we will call it epitaxy okay epitaxial growth which is molecular beam epitaxy molecular beam epitaxy is an epitaxial growth involving the reaction of one or more thermal beams of atoms or molecules with a crystalline surface under ultra high vacuum condition molecular beam epitaxy can achieve precise control in both chemical composition and doping profiles and also we can see that the single crystal multilayer structure with dimensions on the order of uh, on the order of atomic layer can be made by molecular beam epitaxy here we can see that another prototype of molecular beam epitaxy and i have told in the previous slide that the effusion cells are on the left side and the substrate which needs to be uh, layered with epitaxial layer is on the right side so this is another uh, representation another pattern and these are the effusion cells this effusion cell will be having the liquid or the material which we want to fill up and then we can see here we will have the different material here and all i am having the different material so all three different kind of uh, material will eject out of these effusion cells and they will settle this is the susceptor or uh, this is the holder uh, heater actually so this accounts for uh, temperature balance and uh, here we can see that the layer of atoms build up on the substrate and accordingly the very precision and very uh, good control can be uh, attained on these uh, beams fired substrate so depending upon the shutter speed and uh, monitoring the shutter speed we can switch on and switch off uh, the layering or the epitaxial growth in this picture i have tried to uh, show how a real time molecular beam epitaxy looks like in this we can see that these are the nozzles these are the effusion cells and uh, on the basis of this effusion cells we will have uh, a wafer right in front of the effusion cells and this uh, the central this the centralized uh, centralized effusion cell uh, are getting filled up and refilled by the control mechanism which is there and also at the top there is a screen of this control mechanism monitoring at the bottom and using this uh, controls we can either start or stop the effusion action action and also in case of empty effusion cells we can fill it up again refill it up refill uh, refill it up with the required material and we have a central trunk this is the central trunk here we can see this central trunk here cylindrical central trunk uh, on the top of this on the edges of this we have effusion cells this central trunk rotates on its own when the central trunk rotates it means we can have the variations and we can we can have the epitaxial growth of all the effusion cells so sometimes some an another material will be at the top and when this trunk rotate the material b comes on the top and uh, where the material b was at the uh, rear side comes on the front side material a which was that time at the front side comes at the rear side so on the wafer you can epitaxially grow any material a b x y z and 
we can fill and refill uh, one effusion cell again and again using this control action and uh, we have the control action physically present also uh, physically also we have i have shown it here and the controls also we have shown it on a computer screen uh, i have tried to include uh, as much as possible more and more number of prototypes of molecular beam epitaxy so that the student is uh, never unaware of any pattern so here we can see that we have a rotating sample holder at the center and uh, when this rotating sample holder is there at the center depending upon the orientation it will take it will take the uh, materials from effusion cell a b c d depending upon the process we can have 1 2 3 4 any of the effusion cell and then on this uh, particular uh, setup we have a motor and this motor also accounts for rotation and the proper alignment of the uh, holder here we have a fluorescent screen it's a window out here and it is a sample uh, transfer unit this is a air lac valve and of course we have a ionization monometer another window rotating sample and then we have guns on the other side so this is a an, this is another uh, simple uh, prototype of uh, molecular beam epitaxy using which we can see that how n number of methods can be used to fabricate the effusion fabricate or uh, uh, epitaxially grow the required material which is present on the effusion cell the growth rate is faster in vapor phase epitaxy layer and it is approximately 1 micrometer per minute and it leads to difficulty in growth of thin layer. So, since the growth is quite high and quite, quite fast, so there is a difficulty when we want to um, precisely control and we, when we want to stop for a very thin layer. So, since the growth is uh, high uh, for, for a very small uh, point of time the growth increases like anything so to stop for a very thin layer uh, becomes a big task here the boundary layer and the stagnant layer is absent in molecular beam epitaxy what is actually the boundary and the stagnant layer let's say this is a wafer and uh, on this wafer we are alloying the gas so what is actually happening the gas is passing on the wafer and uh, here it is the boundary layer here this one is the boundary layer and uh, at the top we at the bottom we have a this is the boundary layer and here one it, this is the stagnant layer So, boundary layer and stagnant layer means the layer which is very close to the wafer is the boundary layer and the layer which becomes stagnant and we are not able to revise and refresh it which is stagnant layer. So, it acts in reducing the efficiency and it is overall not a required uh, process. So, in molecular beam epitaxy we are completely out of this boundary layer and stagnant layer problem. So, molecular beam epitaxy is again we have to see very costly and sophisticated equipment process in molecular beam epitaxy the layer we want to deposit should be evaporated and this evaporation is done under high vacuum condition to minimize the contamination process now molecular beam epitaxy is always done under very high vacuum condition now vacuum condition means uh, the the environment which uh, we need to uh, have for a uh, contamination free um, epitaxially uh, growing process must always include a vacuum otherwise the wafer will get and epitaxially grow the impurities present in the environment along with the nozzle along with the beam uh, where the required material is being deposited. So, it is always done under high vacuum condition and uh, silicon uh, MBE is done in ultra high vacuum where uh, it is 
like uh, of the order of 10 raised to the power minus 8 to 10 raised to the power minus 10 tor. The heart of this molecular beam epitaxy is basically this ultra vacuum pumping system. Uh, we when we achieve this ultra high vacuum condition, we evaporate the particular species. In case of silicon, since silicon has a very high melting point like 1400 degrees Celsius, so it is very difficult to uh, achieve this uh, in a thermal heating process. So, what we are doing? We are using the electron beam and electron beam is focused on the silicon source and the silicon is evaporated. So, uh, just because we need uh, vapors and this vapors will come when the silicon will be heated and for this heating we have to go to 1400 degrees Celsius which is quite not desired. So, what we are actually doing? We are taking the help of beam. Two pumps are used here because this ultra high vacuum is almost impossible and to achieve by using any single pumping system. So, commonly when we are not talking about ultra high vacuum, the type of pumps we use is a simple thermal evaporation system. For example, that will be rotatory pump and diffusion pump. Both these pumps use oil, particularly diffusion pump will use oil. For molecular beam epitaxy, diffusion pumps are rarely preferred because of its oil vapor. So, usually it is a combination of various pumps like turbo molecular pump, cryo pump or ion sublimation pump. So, something like that more sophisticated pump systems, pumping systems are required to achieve this high vacuum. A holder or crucible is used to hold the silicon as shown in figure above and uh, we have seen an electron gun is also used as a source of electron beam. Electron beam is focused on to the silicon source and from there the silicon is getting evaporated to this conical canon, uh, uh, conical shape in order to reduce dopant effusion cells is used. So, we have seen the effusion cell is again uh, the holder where dopant will be filled up which is uh, heated and there is small opening at the mouth of these effusion cells through which a jet of uh, evaporated dopants will come out and get settled on the top of the wafer. <coughs> The sample itself is placed at the top and there is a substrate holder. A small heater, a thermocouple will measure the temperature of substrate and the substrate temperature is usually much much lower than which what we were talking about which is 1400 degrees Celsius. So, 1400 and 400 there is a huge difference that is the substrate temperature. So, substrate temperature is the one where we are talking about the wafer. So, we pump down the subsystem to the required vacuum level and uh, then we switch on to the electron gun. The evaporated uh, cone is cone of silicon comes here. So, if you want to add dopant, we can use the effusion cells and open the mechanical uh, opening which is called the shutter and the dopants will be added. In this way, there is a hashed reason where the silicon mixed with the dopants are available and that goes and gets deposited and uh, condenses on the relatively lower temperature substrate. So, this is the overall process of molecular beam epitaxy and uh, here we have seen that how epitaxially a layer can be grown on the top of the wafer as and when required. <coughs> In similar way, we can study silicon on insulator. We sometimes need to uh, epitaxially grow a uh, layer of uh, silicon on some insulator. So, all silicon devices structures has inherent problem that are associated with the parasitic circuit uh, property arising from junction capacitance. So, this effort, this effect becomes more severe when the device are made smaller. To overcome this problem, uh, we fabricate the device 
in smaller space of uh, smaller pieces of silicon on the insulating substrate. The initial approach to fabricate such structure was to grow silicon epitaxially on the substrate of sapphire on and uh, the sapphire is nothing but Al2O3 and spinel which is MgAl2O4. Since the substrate material differs from the layer, the process is termed as heteroepitaxy. So, this is how the silicon on insulator can be realized in this in this diagram also we are seeing that how uh, there is uh, at the bottom we are having a plate like structure which is nothing but the uh, substrate on this substrate we have made source drain and gate terminals and uh, we can see that the source and drain are p type and the gate has been made up of n plus material we can also see it in a diagram like this where source and drain have been made out of a p type semiconductor and then here we have a gate this is source this is drain and here we have a gate so this is a uh, substrate So, this is substrate and uh, this is how uh, we can see the silicon on insulator has been realized. The process of the process and the equipment used for silicon on sapphire, it is a very uh, famous uh, silicon on sapphire uh, process. Epitaxy are essentially identical to those which are employed for homo epitaxial growth. So, silane is used for uh, this process where silane is used as a source of silicon and hydrogen gas is used as a carrier gas for silicon source. So, SiH4 gives out silicon plus twice of H2. So, silane, silane is chosen for its low temperature deposition capability which is used to control auto doping of aluminum from the substrate. So, the common deposition temperature is in the range of 1000 degree Celsius to 1050 degree Celsius and the growth rate is 0.5 micrometer per minute. So, uh, and then the film thickness is nothing but uh, of the order of 1 micrometer or less than the film doping and it is of the range of 10 to the power 14 to 10 to the power 16 uh, atoms per centimeter cube. So, in the same way we have to study the epitaxial growth of silicon on amorphous uh, substrate. Silicon on insulator is a recent uh, non-epitaxial approach to provide single crystal silicon. So, single crystal silicon means with this technology amorphous or polycrystalline silicon is recrystallized on an amorphous substrate. So, recrystallizing means we are uh, settling it on the top of amorphous substrate. So, uh, we have a setup for recrystallization using a strip heater. Uh, the following, the, the process is considered non-epitaxial because the silicon film is not in a single crystal as deposited. So, energy for process can be supplied directly to the electron beam or laser. The re crystallized uh, layer are potentially uh, the equal um, uh, equal of homo epitaxial silicon. So, SOI is used in VLSI circuits, photovoltaic solar energy conversion and there are three dimensional ICs. So, that was all about molecular beam epitaxy from my side. We will study and we will have some uh, learning on another set of complex topics in my next lecture. Thank you.